Uh, someone asked me about uh, James Baldwin. And so uh, I picked out, uh, I don't know if favorite is the word, but certainly the most impressive of the James Baldwin uh, books in my life. Uh, several years ago, um, I think it might have been Justin Gibney from the AND campaign who was mentioning in some context, uh, lamenting the fact that there had been a, a, a resurgence of interest in James Baldwin in recent years, not because he had a problem with Baldwin, but because he thought that that was indicative of something culturally, uh, because Baldwin, of course, was somebody who is an atheist, uh, which was very rare in terms of civil rights uh, figures uh, in the 1950s, 1960s. Um, but he sort of speaks to the moment because of that uh, secularism uh, that's there. And he made a good point about that. There definitely has been a resurgence in recent years of Baldwin. And part of that, I'm not sure if it has to do with uh, with Baldwin's atheism as much as it does with this sense that uh, Martin Luther King, for instance, is uh, somebody who is often uh, viewed in contemporary life only in terms of a couple of quotes from the I Have a Dream speech on the part at least of uh, sort of um, general population of white Americans. That's often what uh, is taking place. So there can be this idea that King uh, was naive and sentimental and we can just, uh, we can we can do this uh, together and overcome all of these problems in a way that isn't true. If you, if you listen to King, if you read King, uh, he's somebody who had a, a really complex view of uh, human sin, of the obstacles uh, in front of us. There was a lot of uh, irony used uh, in King, uh, as in uh, all sorts of other leaders uh, over the years. Baldwin, though, is somebody who um, is often going to really highlight the sort of deconstructing of a lack of authenticity present in American life. Um, and so I, I was really struck by that in reading The Fire Next Time uh, really early on in my life. And, and the reason I think that I was drawn to this book is because Baldwin's story is pretty much my story with a different ending in this respect, uh, in terms of his relationship to the church. So uh, this, uh, this book uh, starts off, um, or very, very soon on, talks about the fact that in the, as he puts it here, he says, um, I underwent during the summer that I became 14 a prolonged religious crisis. And of course, as I've talked about elsewhere, uh, I did too. And you go through this and you see why. And I think if I remember right, what I expected was that Baldwin would say that his religious crisis came from the same place that mine did, which was seeing the racism of the white Southern church, the part of it. Um, also, the, there were other issues too, but that was, that was the primary one in my case. Uh, and so I thought that's what Baldwin was talking about, but actually wasn't. Uh, what he's talking about is his life as a young preacher and being in the, the church. And so the book sort of deconstructs church life. And what he concludes is that everybody had to, in order to survive, find a gimmick. And for some people, that was um, that was substances. Some people it was gang life. Some people it was crime. And for him, it was the church. But he talks about how being closer in and closer in, he could see the performativeness. Uh, so uh, he, he talks about how, for instance, he could tell what a preacher is doing when that preacher gets up and asks for an offering in a certain way or does an altar call a certain way. And he can see how it works at the human level. Uh, to, to a degree that he was disillusioned with it. He was disenchanted uh, with it, and he went out and found a different way in the world.
so I get that part of it. Um, even though we're coming from completely different places in life and completely different experiences in life, I get the deconstructing of saying I can see something within the church, uh, in my church experience that's inauthentic. Uh, the reason I say there's a different ending is that um, what you what you see in terms of Baldwin as it relates to the church is for the most part really bleak. And so I, I don't think he ever came to the point where he could differentiate between head and body uh, in the way that the New Testament repeatedly does. So that Jesus is very different than Simon Peter uh, cutting off a soldier's ear or uh, denying that he ever knew him or running away. And and the New Testament is really uh, honest uh, and, and um, self-revelatory about the foibles of the church for all the way through. So the common human experience that Baldwin has there and seeing something that he had idealized to a certain degree and then saw that it disappointed him is one that uh, the New Testament actually answers. And I, I think that, I think this book is really helpful for all sorts of reasons. I mean, Baldwin's a brilliant writer. Uh, he's able to analyze uh, the culture of the moment better than, than most people. But it's also worth write, reading, particularly for Christians, because what you're going to see is the responsibility uh, that the church has uh, to project sincerity, uh, as, as Paul talks about, open proclamation of truth uh, and a life that is genuinely being transformed by ongoing repentance and ongoing faith, while at the same time speaking to uh, people who see the church and to say to them, uh, the church, even at its best, is only a signpost to the kingdom of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ. And so uh, any idealization of the church or any institution, including an institution, human institution founded by Christ in the midst of a, in, uh, of a fallen world, will disappoint, but Jesus will not. I think that's the reminder that we have to have. And as I read Baldwin, uh, one of the things I think about is Walker Percy, uh, who talks about in, I think it was in his interview he did with himself uh, that we'll talk about later on, where he says when he looks back at all of the stupid and evil things that have been done by the church and in the name of Jesus uh, over the last 2,000 years, for him... It is a sign of the divine institution of the church because he says no human in institution, merely human institution, could survive all of that deceit and graft and, and foibles. And I think there's a point to be made there. But James Baldwin, The Fire Next Time, uh, is... Um, is something that I think uh, I think you could benefit from reading, even if you've never had any experience of uh, cynicism, uh, but it can help you to minister to people who have. This is Russell Moore. This is Reading in Exile. Let me know in the comments what you would like for us to talk about here.